I-Corps. Below the DMZ in South Vietnam, 1967. The year began as it would end, with fierce fighting. In February, right after the ceasefire for the Vietnamese New Year, the whole character of fighting changed. From the Mekong Delta in the south, north along the coast, to the bases of Chu Lai and Da Nang, from Quang Nai in southeastern I Corps, to Wei and Quang Tri in the north, along the DMZ from the China Sea to the borders of Laos and Cambodia, Marines saw plenty of action. large-scale pitched battles, reminiscent of the Korean War, the taking and holding of strategic ground like Hills 861, 881. For the men who took and held them, it was rough. Just how rough it was is best described by P.F.C. Henniger. Well, we were uh, moving up on line towards the top of the hill and they started dropping mortars in on us. I saw one hit in front of me. And I went flying through the air. And that was it. Golf Company, earlier situated on the crest of the hill, was trying to give the unit that was being hit some help to... Another Marine, Sergeant David Coleman, had this to say. The NVA that were on the hill that day were just as well trained as we were, and they weren't going to run for nothing. Run or stay. They could not hold their positions against the determined Marines. And so, on April 24th, the 3rd Division smashed attempts by the North Vietnamese Army to take the strategic hills of 861 and 881 near a place called Khe San in the northwest corner of Vietnam. On May 31st, 1967, the Marines in Vietnam said a temporary goodbye to a good friend. General Lewis Walt was relieved, and General Cushman assumed command of I Corps. Remember, General Walt reminded his troops. There is more in this war than fighting and killing. We are here not only to destroy the enemy, but to help rebuild that which he has destroyed. 1967 also saw the continued movement of Marine jet squadrons from the United States to the combat zone of Vietnam in their own aircraft. This transpack of jet squadrons was more than a demonstration of the flexibility of the Marine air arm. Now, only hours from El Toro Marine Air Station near Los Angeles, these planes are also only hours from bases at Chu Lai, or deny. Angel of Mercy, 
and tireless workers. The helicopter continued to prove its worth in Vietnam. Because of these birds, operations deemed impossible a few years ago were carried out with comparative ease, and more Marines were able to come out of these operations alive. The CH-53 came into its own as a real weightlifter, retrieving enough downed choppers to re-outfit two Marine squadrons. Throughout High Corps, the familiar sight of these jungle taxis meant beans and bullets to the Marine on the ground, and for so many, a second lease on life. Throughout the spring and summer along the DMZ, Kaesan, Dong Ha, Jio Lin, and other outposts were repeatedly attacked by major units of the North Vietnamese Army. Khan Tien symbolized not only the Leatherneck's traditional guts, it came to represent the whole of our determined stand throughout Vietnam. This determination is best described by PFC Bert Lancaster, a Marine who was at Con Tien. Well, we're here, and everybody wants to get back home. And you don't like seeing your friends hurt, killed. They just want to say we're over here for a cause, and I'm fighting. I wouldn't go home now, even if I could. And that's the truth. I just believe in what we're fighting for. I wouldn't have it any other way than being somewhere else. Even while the battle with Con Tien was still underway in Vietnam, tribute was being paid to Marines who participated in another battle, Guadalcanal. The 25th anniversary of this historic event occurred in August, and among those paying tribute was Sergeant Major Vuza, a fearless islander who saved the lives of many Marines. There were other Marine Corps operations in Vietnam during 1967, starting with Operation Deck House in the Mekong Delta to the Prairie Operation along the DMZ, a list too long to be recited, a list not without its casualties. Among those killed in action in Vietnam was General Bruno Hochmuth, the first general to be killed in combat in Marine Corps history. From March 19th to November 4th, General Hochmuth served as commanding general, 3rd Marine Division, and was killed when the helicopter in which he was riding crashed. A distinguished chapter in Marine Corps history was closed when General Holland M. Howlin Mad Smith died in San Diego on January 12th. Throughout the year, Marines fought with their customary valor. By year's end, six medals of honor had been awarded to them for actions in Vietnam, three posthumously. Living were, Captain Harvey C. Barnum, Gunnery Sergeant Jimmy E. Howard, Major Howard V. Lee, posthumously were Lance Corporal Joe C. Paul, First Lieutenant Frank S. Reasoner, Staff Sergeant P. S. Connor. At home, there were other significant activities. Marine training increased in tempo and became more oriented toward the conflict in Vietnam. While training progressed in replicas of Vietnamese villages, 
The Marine Corps also held cold weather training in Scandinavian countries. Elsewhere around the world, Marines continue to meet our national commitments despite the demands of combat in Vietnam. Marine veterans from Vietnam also served at the United States Pavilion throughout Expo 67 in Montreal, Canada. President Johnson underscored the importance of the Marine Corps' role today. Visiting Camp Pendleton, he helped celebrate both the 25th anniversary of this big training base and the Marine Corps' 192nd birthday. The president also turned out to review an evening parade at the Marine Barrack in Washington later in the year. In December, Captain Charles Roth is a principal in the first White House wedding in 50 years. Also married in 1967 was Corporal Henry Miller, severely wounded in Vietnam, but typical of those Marines returning to civilian life. Over 70,000 Marines were on duty in Vietnam by year's end when General Wallace Green turned over command of the Corps to General Leonard Chapman in the nation's capital. President Johnson had this to say about the retiring Commandant. Under General Green's inspiring guidance and dynamic leadership, the Marine Corps reached a high level of readiness and managerial efficiency during a period of worldwide tension conflicts and challenges to the national security of the United States. The United States Marine Corps, in the 192nd year of its history, continued to carry out its mission. as it had begun.